Joining me now is Howard Cox. He's the founder of Fair Fuel UK campaign. He's also running for London mayor and wants to scrap ULEZ and the 20 mile an hour zones. Is it just a cash cow to drain motorists dry, this 20 mile an hour stuff, or is it better for public safety? Patrick, I hope you're feeling guilty about what you've done, breaking shame. the speed limit. I mean, a shame. What, what was it, about 21 miles an hour in the 20 zone? It's not quite, mate, but we'll leave that there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it's, this is all part of the, the local council and national government menu of anti-driver policies that are, they've become an epide epidemic, epidemic, epidemic of cash grabbing policies that have seen, you know, that they just don't have any idea about road transport management right across the UK. And it's, I, I can assure you that all it's trying to do is it, it's now become a big brother plan to stop us all driving and to be imprisoned in 15 minute zones. Is it actually better for things like safety, though, or the amount of time it takes you to get to where you need to be, so congestion and presumably as well then the environment? No, I mean, again, there is sparse evidence that 20 mile an hour zones are reducing accidents. I mean, a study by the Queen's University last year found that while speed limits reduce traffic, they do little to stop accidents. And as far as actually in terms of pollution, the, low, the slower you drive, the, the car becomes less efficient and uses more fuel and puts out more emissions. So this is all completely and utterly fantasy land, and it's purely, and I repeat, a cash-grabbing approach by the politicians across the country. Why do you feel so strongly about this, though? I mean, wh why, why should people really care? Because I suppose the argument would be, well, look, if you just stick to the speed limit, then you've got nothing to worry about. Well, that's right. But the problem about sticking to 20 mile an hour, it's almost impossible to stick to 20 mile an hour because you're looking at the speedometer and you're not looking at the road ahead. And let's face it, I've, it's happened. And this is an interesting one. I've been overtaken in 20 mile an hour zones by cyclists uh, mm. and they're not actually subject to it. And they're protected by the highway code in the hierarchy of blame. Uh, they'll never be touched. They can do what they want when they want. And interestingly, one cyclist told me uh, it's great to overtake cars in 20 mile of the zones because it feels like they rule the highways. But when you combine that with you, Les, and the amount of money that motorists are getting clobbered with now under the guise of saving our environment, and they always use examples, don't they, of children in these adverts going, oh, don't ruin my lungs with these toxic fumes and things like that. Uh, is it all actually just a ruse for councils and mayoral candidates, etc., and like yourself, of course, to try to raise more money and, and, and just rinse us dry? Well, ab absolutely. I mean, I'm one of the only candidates that has actually done some economic analysis about the impact of ULEZs on uh, the City of London. And bear in mind, uh, we, we, we're talking being a bit London-centric here, but right across the country, this is coming to cities around the country, and uh, I showed in this economic analysis that ULEZs cost the economy of London £1 billion, or approaching that sort of thing. And, and, and it's, it's madness, it really is. It's purely because people like Sadiq Khan can't manage their economy or their budgets well enough, and they're in a great big deficit of, of a big black hole. Well, just, just quickly, Howard, as well, it's not just that. I mean, I don't mind saying the way I got done was I was on the motorway. It's not actually on my way back from Boston in Lincolnshire, but I would go again. Right. And um, I... Uh, got done by one of these variable speed limits. So I'm driving along. I'd been driving for about three hours. So, OK, I mean, I do want to say this is entirely my own fault, by the way. I'm not trying to pin the blame on anybody else. It was a careless moment behind the wheel. But it, right in front of me, this thing flashes up, gone from a motorway, three lanes, four lanes, completely empty, flashes up, 50. I kind of clocked it, but didn't, really. I got the radio on, you know. And then, um, yeah, by the time I slowed down, the flash went off. And I just thought, you know, this is all a bit... They're just finding new ways to get people, aren't they? But I'm going to have to leave it there. Well, thank you very, very much. Always a pleasure. It's